Hello, Miss Cup here. Um, I realized I did not get to read Kenny and the Dragon yesterday. That made me very sad. So let's let's let let's read some today, yes? So Kenny and the Dragon by Tony Ditterlitzi. Um Simon and Schuster is letting us read, so thank you, Simon and Schuster. Um we are on Ooh, chapter ten. Chapter 10 is called A Dragon and His Wrath. Hmm. Let's see what's going to happen. I brought some new poems to recite over dessert. Is it creme brulee again tonight? Graham asked as he pushed his large head through the window to hover next to the dinner table. He smiled his toothy grin when he saw Kenny, then noticed the old fellow with the white beard and mustache sitting at the table there. We've got some company. They have a fellow poet. Kenneth, why don't you introduce your friend to Graham? His mom asked. Any friend of Kenny's is a friend of mine, as long as it isn't that daft knight sent to execute me, Graham snorted. And then <laughs> George fake coughed a little, because that's exactly who it is, right? <laughs> um, actually... This is him, Kenny said. Graham, meet my old friend George. George, this is my new friend, Graham. And this is them. Yes, Graham, George, and Kenny. Kenny bit his lip and held his breath. His father slurped his second helping of soup while his mom quietly got up from the table to start washing the dishes. George and Graham eyed each other for some time, waiting for the other to speak first, and then break the uncomfortable silence. Silence. So, George said at last, I can say I haven't seen a dragon in many, many years. In some ways, it's like seeing a familiar face. Yes, well, get used to it, said the dragon in a very icy tone. Um... This is one face that is not leaving the area anytime soon, either by hook or by crook. Are we clear on that, Beowulf? Now, now, said George, rising. There's no need for that kind of name-calling. What else should I call you? Enlighten me, O oh great savior, the drake responded. Kenny could see a wisp of smoke wafting from Graham's nostrils. He wondered if he should stand between the two of them to keep the peace but he caught his father's eyes and was silently spoken to of course you know what i'm talking about when your mom or dad um, talks to you with nothing more than a look or a glance and nary a word is said that happens to me my mom did it all the time where she'd be like I, teachers do it too all the time don't they where they're just like Right. Kenny understood and remained in his chair, appearing calm as his parents were clearly doing. Beowulf was a barbarian, an uncultivated lout. I am none of those things. I've been trained under the king himself in the proper manner for dragon removal, and I agreed, Graham said. Uh, uh, agreed what? stammered George. Kenny and his parents exchanged glances. Um, I agree. Beowulf was a barbarian. He couldn't just dispatch of Grendel. He had to swim down to his home and butcher his mother as well. George blinked p p precisely. He looked at Kenny, who noticed the slightest curl of a smile hiding behind his underneath his mustache. Now, what he should have done was lock up that insolent ogre and have him do hard labor for his injustices. Interesting, interesting, Graham said as he paused for a moment and looked at Kenny. Do you think a ruffian like that can truly be reformed? And there it was. Kenny realized that he had been holding his breath the entire time, and he finally let it out with great relief. He and his parents watched and listened as George and Graham discussed Beowulf, 
and whether the warrior could become an upstanding member of society. Things were going swimmingly by the time coffee was served, as the two reminisced about adventures they had in their youth. There were jokes and laughs, and afterwards as the dragon brulee the desserts with a flicker of flame from his left nostril. Everybody went out to the front porch so that Kenny's father and George could enjoy their afternoon dinner pipe. You know, Joel, or you know, Graham, Kenny was right. You are wonderful company. I haven't had good dinner conversation like that in a dog's age, George said, as he shook the dragon's large, scaly paw. Agreed. You really are a well-read good fellow, Graham replied, lighting George's pipe for him. I suppose we do have a lot in common. He looked over at Kenny. Well done, little Banting. Well done. Holy smokes. What's that? Kenny's dad asked as he as he pointed with his pipe stem. And look, look, there's Kenny's dad. He's a cute little rabbit, I think. A line of bobbing lights was streaming from the center of Round Brook toward Shepherd's Hill. Everybody stared at the site for some time. Well, 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 George said with a sigh. Are those all night fishermen? asked Graham. Those are people getting ready for tomorrow, said Kenny. The Riverstone feeling was back, and he wondered if they all felt it as well. Um, yep, son, his father replied, sucking on his pipe. I believe you are correct. That's a mess of people, Kenny's mother added, knitting nervously, and they are coming with a lot of expectations. You boys are not going to be able to get out of this easily. Kenny watched the procession cross the bridge over Parish Creek and down the road toward Shepherd's Hill. He swallowed down the river stones and allowed the gears in his head to click and whir. He thought of what George had taught him about planning ahead for his moves in chess. He had just gotten his two friends to see eye to eye, but how was he going to do the same with an entire town? His father creaked back in his rocker. I heard people were betting on who was going to come out on top of this ruckus. Sorry, George, but a lot of them was betting odds against you. George chuckled as he drew a long puff off his pipe. He sighed. Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. What can you expect from an old retired shopkeeper? And you know what they say. Come not between a dragon and his wrath. Heh, that's from King Lear, Graham said, watching the bobbing lanterns gathering around the bottom of the hill. One of my favorite performances from Shakespeare. I wonder if he ever met a dragon. He'd certainly know what to do with a crowd like this. And the gears in Kenny's brain finally all kicked into place. Ooh, that's it! Kenny squealed, causing everybody to jump. I know what we have to do, and we don't have much time to do it. Everyone inside. That's the end of chapter 10. Sounds like Kenny has a plan. I'm very excited to see what it is. What do you think it is? Hmm? I don't know. Okay. We'll do chapter 11 in just a bit.